In today's video, we had to survive 400 days in hardcore modded Minecraft. Previously in our 300 days, we crafted a fire dragon steel axe. We had to defeat a death worm. Our base was invaded by the devastator. In this video, we have three objectives. First was to make our little dragon a stage five dragon. Second was to obtain fire dragon steel armor. Our third and final objective is to defeat the Devastator and his Stage 5 Dragon. Can we survive? Stay tuned to find out. On day 301, we had a job to do. We needed to start by repairing all the windows in our base, our trophy room, and even our aquarium. These monsters grief your entire bases during the night. After repairing all the damages caused by the mobs, we went to bed. In the morning, we gathered our wheat to feed some of our animals, and when we walked in, we noticed every single one of our animals was missing. I wonder what could have happened here. It turns out, in the middle of the night, while we were both sleeping, the Devastator shows up on his dragon. The first thing he does is enters directly into our farms, and then he starts killing all of our animals. I'm not sure what we did to make this guy so mad. He just got on his dragon and laughed. And from days 303 to 306, we spent gathering animals. Obviously, since all of ours were killed, we needed to get more. I actually found a little pet frog. We found some horses. We even found a jungle biome nearby and found some ocelots. So, as you can see, our barn is full now. We didn't waste any time. We immediately went to the forest nearby and eliminated animals. We needed to kill them to make dragon meals. Oh god, sometimes you just kind of have to feel bad for those animals, but you know what? It was for a good cause. Anyways, we went up to feed our dragon, and we've realized somehow my dragon already turned into a stage 5 dragon. I didn't feed it, Forrest didn't feed it, it somehow just grew. So, we have a stage 5 dragon. Now, we just have to feed Forrest dragon. I went ahead and gave Forrest all the dragon meals that I was going to use to feed my dragon, and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, his dragon is starting to grow. And it started to grow so much that it literally just walked through the wall. How is this even possible? Does this game have physics? And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we both have stage 5 dragons. Now, comment down below, who would win in a fight? A stage 5 fire dragon or a stage 5 ice dragon? The cool thing about the ice dragon is it blows ice and it actually can literally walk on water because it's turning everything into ice as it walks. That is pretty cool. We went back into the twilight forest. We needed to find stage 1 to 3 dragons and kill them for their dragon blood. After running around for a little while, we found what it looked to be a dragon's den, but I couldn't find the dragon, and it turns out it was behind us. Somehow it got across the water. So we popped our strength, our speed, and popped a golden apple. By the looks of it, the dragon was completely aggroed on Forest, meaning it wasn't going to attack me. This dragon kept trying to walk over to kill Forest, but I guess he forgot how to fly or something. Anyways, that was a pretty easy kill, honestly. So we collected its dragon blood. We're gonna need a lot of this to craft fire dragon. Dragon Steel Armor. After finding out that dragons have a hard time killing you when there's water in between them, we started using that to our advantage. So Forrest would stand on the other side of the water while I would stand there attacking the dragon. And just like that, we got some more fire dragon blood. While we were out killing dragons and collecting blood, the Devastator showed up at our Twilight House. He dismounted off his dragon and headed directly into our house. Could he be stealing our loot? And as I'm looking, I see he's placing TNT everywhere, and it looks like he has brought a pet dragon with him. By the looks of it, the Devastator has brought a pet dragon to burn down and TNT our house. And the Devastator jumps through the Twilight Portal so he doesn't get affected by this. Which leaves our entire base to explode. After the base exploded, he came back through the Twilight Forest, Ender pearled up to his stage 5 dragon, he mounted the dragon, and flew away like nothing ever happened. And as you can see, a couple days of traveling later, we made it back to base, and there was nothing left besides the portal. Why would the Devastator do something like this? What did we do that made him hate us so much? After returning back from the overworld, just gathering some stone supplies and some wooden supplies, we started to build our base. After creating the walls, we went for a simple wood build for the roof. 
And as you guys can see, not too much more time passed, and we finished up the base. We got some stone supplies for all of the walls. We prefer stone brick. It looks pretty nice. We just added a few chests in here, and then we had a ladder going up to a second floor. We haven't decided what to put in here yet, but we have the option if we want anything in there later. While out looking for more dragons for their blood, we found a dragon cave, and there was a dead what seemed to be stage four or five dragon. The devastator must have been here because I don't see who else could have killed this thing. Day 321, we continued our search for a dragon. We found some sort of floating island, and beneath it, there was some sort of purple figure, so we popped our strength and speed potions to be safe. As we got closer, we realized this was some sort of three-headed dragon, and I am heading right for it. We run really fast to avoid its fireballs. You can see its health at the top of the screen, and as you guys can see, these dragon steel weapons do quite a lot of damage. Just as I thought this fight would be easy, it hit me once and got me to 2 HP. This thing nearly one-shot me in full onyx armor. We have to be very careful. And as you guys can see, as I went away to pop my health pots, Forrest was able to defeat the Hydra. And after looting the Hydra, we have gotten the Hydra head. So I put it on for fun and I look kind of silly. After gathering a ton of dirt with my onyx shovel, Forrest and I built up. We needed to see what this floating island was. We entered into the island and went up the ladder, reaching an empty room. We found a hallway that is very high up. You do not want to fall down from there. Anyways, we approached what seemed to be some sort of brewing room and found a book. The book reads, The giants seem to be plotting an assassination attempt on my dragon Fafner. I will be infiltrating their fortress to try to acquire more intel. If I do not return, warn the kingdom of their plans, dash, Devastator. Could the Devastator possibly be a good person just trying to protect the Twilight Forest? From days 322 to 324, we spent brewing our potions, and when we looked at the window, we saw some sort of what seemed to be explosions going on. We went outside to get a closer look, and it was indeed explosions. Somehow, someway, TNT was flying everywhere, and it looks like it was targeting the village right next to our base. As you guys can see, this TNT was no joke. It completely wiped out the entire village. How could have this happened? We decided to get a closer look, and in the sky, we see fire coming down, and it looks like it's the Devastator's dragon. The Devastator was behind this. He blew up the entire village next to our base. And as you guys can see, the village is no longer there. It has been completely destroyed. For the next five days, we scavenge around the Twilight Forest looking for ice dragons. We needed to collect ice dragon blood, that way we could create ice dragon steel armor. So we walked up to the dragon, giving it a smack, waking it up. And since the dragon was fully aggroed on forest, it just allowed me to get a crap ton of free hits on it. And just like that, we were able to kill the dragon. And we collected the ice dragon blood. So we spent the rest of those five days killing a bunch of ice dragons to get all of their ice dragon blood. While we were returning back home, we found some sort of massive lair or mansion. We weren't even really sure what it was. We got a bit closer and this thing literally looked like it went to sky limit. This thing was massive. Anyways, we walked right in and we weren't sure if anyone was home, so we crouched to keep it quiet. We heard a dragon roar from outside and there it was. It was coming straight for us. We went and greeted the dragon at the front of the door. Since the dragon was aggroed back onto forest, what I did was I kept hitting it out of the doorway. That way it wasn't able to hit forest, but I was still able to keep hitting it. And just as the dragon breaches, we were able to take him down. We're starting to learn to use the terrain as a big advantage when fighting dragons. Once making it to the top, it definitely was a lair. There was a little brewing area here, a bunch of chests, and I even found another book inside of this shelf. Inside of the book, it read, The giants will pay for the relentless killing of our dragon family. The Devastator will be remembered as a horror story for the land of the giants. Fafner and I will receive aid from zombie hordes to assist us in our conquest. Let this be a historic day for our kind. After we returned back to base, we took down the dragon walls around our dragons. That way they have a lot more room to move around. And then we started working on creating our ice dragon forge. This is what we're going to use to be able to make forest ice dragon forge armor. After combining the crucible steel ingots with the ice dragon blood, the dragon starts blowing all of the ice at the dragon forge, creating an ice dragon steel ingot. We put our crucible steel ingots in with our fire dragon blood, and there we go. Now my dragon is crafting fire dragon steel ingots. 
The next step was to, of course, create our fire dragon seal armor. And just like that, we enchanted it with protection four. Wearing this armor gives us plus 20 hearts, permanent strength two, and forest armor gives them plus 20 hearts and permanent resistance two. That is awesome. After seven days of traveling through the Twilight Forest, we had found the Aurora Palace. The reason why we were looking for this thing so desperately is because this place contains glass swords. Glass swords are essentially the best weapon in the entire game, so we were hoping that we'd find some in here. And sure enough, once we got higher up in the tower, we opened the chest and found a glass sword. My fire dragon seal sword does 30 damage per hit, and the glass sword does 80 damage per hit. That is a huge difference. And after running up countless stairs, we hit one more parkour course, and at the very top, there's a chest containing an ender bow and another glass sword. There's a mob coming at us, so I use my glass sword and literally one-shot it. That is insane. What we didn't know is once you get to the top of the palace, there's a Snow Queen boss that tries to jump on you and crush you. As you guys can see, Forrest and I both have glass swords, which is very effective. Now, the only way the Snow Queen actually does damage is if she falls and crushes you. As you can see, I stood still for a bit too long and she tried crushing me. Good thing we have full fire dragon steel armor because that would have hurt. Anyways, we ended up taking her down fairly easily. Anyways, after traveling for a few days, we made it back to our base. The next thing we needed to do was craft a fire dragon steel bow. But before I did that, Forrest gave me two totems of recalling and a totem of undying. And just like that, we crafted a fire dragon steel strengthened longbow. This thing's pretty insane. We traveled around the overworld to find a woodland mansion to make more totems of undying and we stumbled upon this massive mansion. We entered into this building and it was massive. We looked around and saw some chests and a massive ladder leading to the very top. Before heading to the top, we found some ores. We found a chest with ice dragon steel boots and even an ice dragon sword. We found a couple of god apples and even a beacon. Now that we've looted the chests, we need to figure out what is at the top of this building. Upon arriving, we looked over the edge and that is a long way down. And of course, we found ourselves another book. The book stated, my dragon Fafner and I went out hunting today in the overworld. He helped me catch and kill my first deer. He said I'm destined to end the conflict between the dragons and the giants. From what it seems, the Devastator is actually a good guy. He's just trying to defend the Twilight Forest from the giants. We traveled all the way back to the lair we found in the Twilight Forest and we set down two signs. One of them saying, hello Devastator, we would like to discuss a peace treaty, please consider, and the other one providing him coordinates to meet us. After sitting around and waiting for him for a little while, we read in the chat and it said, change of plans, meet here instead, and he gave us new coordinates. I guess he didn't feel safe here. So a couple of days of running go by and we found the Devastator and his stage 5 dragon. As soon as we walked up to the glass, the Devastator said you've already infiltrated the land of the dragons. In order for us to continue negotiations, you both need to prove your neutrality. In other words, he doesn't trust us and we need to do something to prove to him that we are peaceful. He then went on to say, until you've defeated the Yurgast, do not speak with me any longer. So our next mission is to kill the Yurgast in the Twilight Forest. After four days of searching in the Twilight Forest for the Yurgast dungeon, we have finally found the building that he surfaces in. We charge directly up to the top and instantly the Yurgast blasts us with a fireball. Boris and I both were making really good use of our bows, but every time we bowed him, it seemed like he healed. So we wondered if there was a way to bring him down. Forrest figured out that if you place a redstone torch next to the piston, it actually sucks the gas in. And as you can see, just by sucking it in one time, the glass swords did so much damage, getting it to half HP. And as you can see, while I was eating, Forrest used the redstone torch to drag the gas in. And just like that, the Yurgast was defeated. We looted the chest in the center and got the Yurgast trophy. Look at this thing. I put it on my head. This actually looks pretty insane. Now we just need to bring it back to the Devastator as proof that we killed him. After a few days of running, we have made it to the Devastator. I went ahead and placed down a fence, and Forrest placed the Gash Trophy on the fence, proving to him that we killed him. And the Devastator said, Wow, I didn't expect you to return. You have proven yourselves worthy. However, to fully gain your trust, you must assist us in conquering the Giant's Fortress. From what it seems, the Devastator wants us to help him defeat the Giants. And from days 383 to 386, we spent making golden apples, brewing up potions in preparation for this battle. 
After a few days of flying, Forrest and I have arrived at the Devastator's Dome. We dismounted our dragons and parkoured our way over to the front. And in the chat, the Devastator said, follow me. And the barrier around him disappeared. So it was time, ladies and gentlemen, to fight the giants. We mounted our drakes and followed the Devastator. After traveling for what seemed to be thousands of miles with the Devastator and Forest on our dragons, we have finally arrived at the location. The Devastator brought us through what seemed to be some sort of jungle of thorns, so we had to be careful not to die in here. Good thing they don't do too much damage. We found ourselves in a massive white castle, and we are following the Devastator up the stairs into a pink room. There beholds a giant. Before fighting, we pop our speed and run directly at the giant. We were able to take these two down fairly easily because of our glass sword, but this is likely not going to be all of them. As I walk outside, I hit an enderman and it teleports me to the very bottom and there's three giants waiting for me. The problem is I am not able to outrun them and they do insane damage. If you guys think about it, I have 20 extra hearts and it got me to seven hearts. So it does insane damage. We ended up climbing up this massive spiral staircase leading to the roof, and outside we saw some giants. So before we went out, we popped our speed and a god apple. We needed to pop a god apple to be secure that we wouldn't die, and as we walked out, there had to be at least 20 of them, and every single one of them was aggroed on top of me. The only issue is they do more damage than my god apple can heal. I tried popping a golden apple and almost died because of it. I needed to retreat. I went in back inside the building using my last health bot. Before going back out, we pop a few golden apples and try killing them in the doorway here. As you can see, Force and Devastator made a lot of progress eliminating all of the giants. The Devastator said, well done. Even though the conflict between the dragons and the giants isn't resolved, you have my gratitude. I will leave you in peace in the overworld. The Devastator then ran and jumped off the edge. We needed to look over and make sure he was okay and he was legitimately gone. He literally just disappeared in front of our eyes. And from days 398 to 400, we traveled back home. And ladies and gentlemen, we have survived 400 days. If you made it this far in the video, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. And leave a comment down below whether you guys like the Devastator now or whether you still do not like him. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.